Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The South African arm of Germany-based defense and security group Cassidian has designed and manufactured what it describes as the world's most modern submarine periscope in its class at its purpose-built facility in Irene Centurion. Natalie Grieve has the story. The 25 million rand Cero 250 submarine periscope system is fully designed and manufactured in South Africa and features high performance optics, an infrared camera, a still camera, laser capabilities as well as night vision equipment. The assembly process of the 12 meter tall periscopes, which takes between 9 and 12 months, is conducted in a succession of clean rooms at Cassidian's local facility, where the highly polished glass optics are fitted into the periscope tube in a controlled manufacturing environment. The 850 kilogram periscope, which has a lifespan of some 30 years, is then moved to a tower for final testing and calibration before being shipped to international clients. Cassidian Optronics MD Quibus for Yun discusses the development of the Pridely South African periscope. Well, I think the first thing that we have to say is um, this started off by, um, by us developing a completely new periscope for our German parent company. Um, we one of um, less than five companies in the world that actually have the capability to do so. So um, we see a big market in this, in the whole world, for export especially, and uh, we decided to start off with a complete new development in South Africa. So uh, that was two and a half years ago, and uh, today we're fortunate to see the first uh, completed periscope hanging in the tower. So it's a special event for us as a total South African product um, to be actually designed and engineered and manufactured locally in South Africa. Fuyun adds that it is not only the local design and manufacture of the system that is notable, but also the fact that the company has committed to extensive localization during manufacturing and reinvests a significant portion of its revenue into research and development. We're in the high-tech business and an innovative company, and if you want to do that and if you want to stay in the business for, um, for a sustained period, um, there's actually only one way to do it. And, um, once you're the hamster in the wheel, you have to keep running. And I think investment, um, own investment out of own funds is an essential part of the confidence that we have in our business going forward into the future and remaining competitive in the international market especially. And therefore we reinvest, um, our goal is about 10% per year of own funds um, of our revenue back into R&D. Although our revenue is mostly uh, earned in the export market, about 90% of our revenue comes from export, 70% uh, of our total spend is actually local. Um, the design and engineering we do completely in our own company, sometimes with some local South African subcontractors, but that's purely South African and all the IP that we develop around this is actually therefore then kept in South Africa. Other news making headlines this week, a US company eyes the African PV market. NASDAQ-listed Solar Photovoltaic, or PV Group First Solar, says that it's engaging with several sub-Saharan African governments around the benefits of installing utility-scale PV systems to diversify their energy mix and accelerate energy security. There's not a deep understanding of what solar can provide and what we can supply and how we can help governments and different communities in the, in the African industry. Uh, if you go to different countries, there are different uh, ways of looking at, it, at, at these projects and uh, you see sometimes that people don't understand really what is the benefit that we can bring. So, um, you know, looking at, uh, at the governments, we are doing a lot of uh, this type of forums, we provide a lot of information, we share a lot of, uh, uh, of our knowledge with the regulators, with the government ministers, uh, the different departments, and uh, if people understand better what we can bring to the table, um, you know, this is something that is really to the benefit of, of the region. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.